In this video, I'm going to show you how to run a Next.js app on DigitalOcean on a clear from scratch Ubuntu server. No need for Vercel, no need for Netlify. And I'm not talking about the DigitalOcean apps platform. I'm talking about provisioning a server from scratch on Ubuntu for seven, I think now it's $7, seven bucks a month. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to run two Next.js apps on the same server. Let's go. No more Vercel, no more need for Netlify. Although we love you, Vercel, we love you Netlify. We want more options. We want to be able to run Next.js app, an open source app or React on our own servers because we're cheap. Well, come on, come on. Let's tell the truth about developers. Let's go. Plus, we need more options. All right. We cannot be stuck on only versus L. These are only hosting platforms and they do simplify things, but they could be expensive and they also provide some limits. You can run multiple Next.js apps on your, if you have your own server and you could even run a, another backend server on the same server. So you could have everything in one. If you go to Vercel, you will need to have a front end and then you might need to make another server for a backend anyway. I'm going to show you how to run multiple apps in one on the main uh, one domain called Welcome to Next.js. And I've just, it's a boilerplate. I've added edited to the page so I can show you this. Uh, this is one site and then testomarl.com. I've added the boilerplate, right? So you can see the difference. So I have two sites, two Next.js apps. Let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is really, really exciting. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The step-by-step -step is going to provisioning an Ubuntu server on DigitalOcean. Make sure we have the latest packages. Put Nginx as the server, implement Node.js and make sure we have NPM and then another thing called PM2. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and create a regular old droplet in, you know, called the Ubuntu server. So go create, droplet, choose Ubuntu, basic, premium Intel, and then the $7 a month plan is all that we need. We don't need to add block storage. We'll go to the data center. I'll choose New York, choose the one closest to you. SSH keys, I already have some there. So we'll just go ahead and choose those. Um, make sure you'll be able to get into your server. So just make sure if you don't have an SH key, just go ahead and add one. We don't need to do anything here because this is just a demo. And now I'm just going to choose, I'm going to name it Next.js app. I have another one, so I'll call this Next.js Ubuntu. All right, and that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and create the droplet. Now this takes a little bit of time to provision. So the next step here is what I'm going to do is once it's provisioned, I'm going to get the IP. I'm going to point my domain names, my domain and my sub domain because I'm going to show two apps running. All right, it's provisioned. Now I have an IP address with a fresh server. Now what I'm gonna do is go into, I have Namecheap, or you can do this in GoDaddy. And what I'm gonna do is go to the domain name and I'm gonna change the A record to point to the DigitalOcean server. So right here, it's a record at, that's gonna be the main domain. And then I'm also going to choose another subdomain called test so I can show you how you can run another site on the same server. So we're gonna point both of these to DigitalOcean server, and these are just A records. So we're gonna, that takes some time to propagate. So we're gonna let that propagate while we continue on. Now, this should be running. Now let's get started. So I tried to zoom in, and now what we have to do is actually go ahead and run all the commands. So I'm gonna copy the address, I'm gonna SSH into here. So let's just, let me zoom this in a little bit so hopefully you can see this. So we'll SSH root. And again, I'm not going to be creating any other user because I just want to show you the steps. If you create another user, the same steps apply. I'm just going to run this in root. Great. So now we're inside. I'm going to clear so we can do fresh, you know, get to the top. I hope you can see the terminal um, because most of these are terminal commands. So the first thing, the first step, I'll make sure I have some of these in a gist somewhere so you can go through the steps. It's multiple steps, but it's all just provisioning the server. So the first thing is we're just nothing fancy. We're just updating and upgrading, getting the latest packages on our Ubuntu server. Just let that run. That's just basic digital ocean stuff. And this takes some time. So just let that run. And while that's going, what we can do is just do a DNS checker to see if our domain has propagated. So you can do is do Omar, you know, put the domain name and just see if it is propagated. Oh, so it's pretty quick. So it's saying that it's propagated through. Okay, so if you see this right here, um, just go ahead and keep that, you know, just click OK and keep the default. And it does take some time to download all these, so just be patient with it. Come on, digital ocean, go. We're finally done. The next thing is what we want to do is we want to install Nginx and we want to install Certbot, which is going to let us use Let's Encrypt to secure our domain name for free. So it's just going to be sudo apt install Nginx, the Certbot, the Python 3 Certbot Nginx, and just click that and let it run. That should be fairly quick. Um, so we're going to do 
think it should be quick. So that's done. And now what we want to do is just do some basic digital ocean, you know, Ubuntu server stuff. So we want to allow uh, Nginx to have access um, to the firewall. So just basic, um, you know, firewall stuff. This is common for, you know, most of Ubuntu servers. So there it is. Um, UFW allow open SSH, and then we're going to enable, um, yes, and we're going to enable this basic firewall. Firewall is active, enabled on system startup. That's pretty much we have the basics of the server. Still, main names aren't working because we didn't set up the SSLs just yet. So, right now, if you go straight to the IP, we just have the basic server running fine. Okay, great. Now we want to start the process. This is just basic. We got it loaded, right? We got the server up. Now we just want to go ahead and install NPM so we can start doing everything we need to install Next.js. Just install npm and we need that so we can start pulling packages great now we have npm installed that took a while the next thing we have to install is a package called pm2 pm2 is just a process manager for node.js because node.js needs to the server needs to run it's just a way to tell node you know to start or stop your server so that it runs the app it's npm install globally pm2 so let's install that package and let's let that run now I'm just gonna run PM2 status to make sure you know this looks okay. And perfect. As you can see here, um, it's just nothing is running, it's just showing the, the basics. All right, so now let's click clear. And now we actually want to get node. We're gonna install NVM and node. So what I'm gonna do is cd into var and ww. So as you can see here, the, the there's already a default HTML. That's like the basic one that's already running on the IP address. Welcome to Nginx. We're gonna basically remove that and install put Next.js, our own app, um, another folder there. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So um, this one, what you wanna do is first grab the package and I'll have a gist here. Um, and that's the command curl, you know, and it just, you're basically pulling the NVM package and then we're gonna install it. So let's grab the package. And then these commands are important. We're going to, let me move this up a little bit, make sure you can see, exec shell. And then we want to install NVM. Okay, now this was gonna bring in Node.js. Now we have Node, and now we're actually going to set up what we need to get Next.js going. All right, so I'm gonna clear this. And you could clone um, something from a repo, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create that because that's gonna be a process of creating SSH keys. And that it's pretty easy, but I wanna save that for another video. I'm just gonna use this to go ahead and clone Next.js right here in the terminal. If you don't do that, what you can do is you can create an SSH key, add that SSH key to your Git you know, repository, and then you could Git pull and it'll pull it right, right here in where we are. But we're just gonna go ahead and create it. So we'll do um, npx create next app latest this is what you would do on your local computer. And I'm going to create it, I'm gonna call it omarl.com. And I'll just, you know what, we'll just call it omarl for now take out the dot com. Hopefully that works. And that's pretty much it. We're just basically creating a Next.js app right here. Is that the ASMR that people do on these things? My favorite ASMR is the keyboard. I love the keyboard. There's some YouTubers. All right, let's go. It started. Awesome. Now if we go LS, we have HTML, we have a new directory. So I'm going to CD into that directory. Now we're going to do NPM run build, right? This is just basic Next.js stuff you would do on your local computer. So now if we do ls you can see that we have everything for a next.js package so i'll cd out of here so now what we have to do is we have to create an nginx configuration file to say hey when when the domain name comes in go here and then we still also have to run the application using pm2 which we haven't done so that's our next step so let's go ahead and what we're going to do is go ahead into cd etc nginx and you'll see here a thing called sites available Okay, and sites enabled. The first thing we have to do is go into sites available. Available. All right, you can see there's one called default and we're gonna, that's the default Nginx one that came with the server. We're gonna remove it after we create our own touch, creating the file, omarl, and then nano into that omarl. And now um, we're gonna add the config file. I'll add this config file into a gist somewhere. It's not a lot here. Um, if we go ahead in here, oh, now it's zoomed in so you can see a lot of it, but we're listening. We're using the server name omarl.com and then gzipping some of these files. Now these are critical to have. So I'm gonna put this in a gist alias right here. Should be omarl, that is what I named it, right? Yep, we wanna change that to whatever yours is. And we wanna leave this 127 on the 3000 port. So we're gonna go ahead and um, control um, to save it, save, go out of here. 
Now you have to typically, this is very common on all servers. You have to now copy this over into sites enabled, but we don't have to do that. And I just don't, it's just annoying process. So what we're going to do is there's a way where you can just keep your sites available and not have to worry about sites enabled. So what we want to do is go into the nginx dot config file. So make sure you're at this path, right? You're back in the nginx. And now we're going to go into nginx, oops, nano, because I want to edit that file nginx.conf. All right. So now we're going to scroll down. Uh, okay, here it is. So it, we want to change this to sites available, because I don't want to have to add um, multiple times every time I add one. So that's it. So we're telling it to use the sites available, not sites enabled, and so we don't have to deal with sites enabled again. So we'll back out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to restart this. All right, great. Just so I can get that to reload. So the next step is we want to actually start the process in PM2. Let's just make sure Nginx is good to go. Nothing wrong. Fingerprint for us, syntax is okay. So let's go into the CD sites available and let's delete the default, right? So LS and let's do RM default. Let's make sure that's gone. So LS, it's gone. Let's back out and let's go into CD sites enabled LS and let's remove that one as well. All right, LS. And let's let's go ahead and restart system CTL, restart Nginx. We have just our Omar L config file. And then let's go into CD var ww ls and let's go into cd. You can leave the HTML cd omar l and let's start this process. PM2 start npm npm um, name and then omar l. Let's start it. All right. Let's go here and let's see what's happening. All right. So it's not loading here, but you can see here uh, it's loading from the IP. So this is great. So now we have Next.js working. The reason why it's not getting a domain name yet is because it needs the SSL in order to start loading itself. Now, all that we have to do is, is create the cert bot, which is going to be a free lesson encrypt. So we'll clear and we will do sudo cert bot dash dash nginx dash D and then your domain name. So we're going to do that and let's see if this works. So enter your email address. I'll um, just put in agree and then fine. They can share information. Just going through the let's encrypt prompt. This is very common. All right. So we'll do the redirect. Um, I want to make sure that it always redirects using SSL. And supposedly this worked. So let's just do a system CTL uh, restart Nginx just in case. And let's hope that this worked. Um, all right. So this the IP went away. And now it loaded on a domain name. So now we have Next.js. And guys, this looks like a boiler. This is the boilerplate, but trust me, it all works. That's it, guys. So you could stop here and you could have Next.js running. Now, what you could, I'm gonna show you in one second. Let's get another domain uh, right on the same server. Now, this is interesting because there's some nuances here. Just to reiterate, to git clone your own, and you could do git and all everything that you need to do right on the server. I just built Next.js on there so I didn't have to go through the SSH process. Okay, now let's create another um, site and I'm going to show you how to launch that site. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so that we can know that this is one, this one is like one, this is related to the Omer L. CD pages and then we'll do nano um, index.js and I'll just update this right here and we'll go here and call this welcome Next.js. I'll click edit it so that you know it's this one, right? So we'll save it, we'll go back, Let's go ahead and do npm run build, we'll do refresh, and there it is, edited. So this is the one that we've played with. So now we're gonna make another one. So I'm gonna go back out into here, npx create, we're just gonna create another one back in the same place, back in the root, create next app at latest, and we'll call it test omar l, which is referring to, you can name this whatever you want, and I'm gonna bring in the other domain name here. Great. So now we have to do the same thing. We have to build it. PD test Omar L and then NPM run build. And we're just gonna have another boilerplate Next.js app running. Now we have this, but it won't run. We need another config file to say, hey, when test Omar L comes in, go to this place. Now we're gonna go back to CD var CD etc nginx. And now we are back here. So we're gonna go into CD sites available. We have Omar L. Now we're going to create a new one. So we're going to do touch. Now we're going to go into it and edit it. 
And now I'm, I have the same config file. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to, whoops, no, wrong, paste. <laughs> and then we're going to paste the whole config file. Now we're going to make a couple of edits. Okay, this is key. So now we're going to change this to the server name, which is going to be whatever domain name is coming in. So it's test.omaro.com. That's a subdomain. Nothing else really changes except I'm saying, hey, go into not omarl, go into the test omarl in the ww root, right? That's all. And then we have to change the port. Okay. But this is not all. This is not the only step, but it's part of it. Okay. So we just did the same config file. We'll go ahead, save this, X out. And now we'll do let's do system reload system ctl restart nginx to let that kick in refresh test.omrl and now we don't have the ssl yet but let's continue all right so you see here it's not pointing just yet okay right now it's still pointing to the original we need to make another edit that's really important we need to make sure that next as loads on this other port oops cd pm2 CD OMRL LS. Okay, great. So we'll clear just so we can start. So we'll go to CD pages LS. Right. Let's update the packages JSON file to load in a new port on production. So we'll go ahead and we'll do LS, right? So nano package.json. Here we are. So it should be on the start. We want to say go into we want to make sure this goes into the other port. So we're saying when you start, load it on this other port. Now, this number has to match the one that was placed in your config file, which I know it does. Remember, the first one, omarl.com, is running on 3000. And we didn't need to because we don't need to specify port because that's the default port. Now, remember, you have to rebuild this. So we're going to rebuild npm run build. Now, what we want to do is we want to reload the PM2. All right, PM2 start and PM, same thing. Now we're going to have a different name. We want to have a different process, a second process to start, and we'll click enter. Let's give it a cert bot for now. Or just, just in case, what I want to do here is I want to add the cert bot because I think that is what's stopping it for the test.omrl.com. So let's let that run. We're going to make a new certificate. All right, we'll do the redirect, redirect all traffic, and that should be it. So let's just refresh this. Let's see what happened. There it is. So, wow, that was all it was. So you just need the surf bot for it to work. Um, so that's critical. But now look, we have two apps running, right? And I, the first one was edited. That's why you can see. And this is the other one. Now you can just do whatever. You have two Next.js open source apps running on one server for $7. Um, two things, just make sure when you do go in, PM2 status will show you that both are running, right? Omar L being the first one. These, you can name these whatever you want as long as you're inside the root of the folder. Um, and you can see that they're both online. Is this it, guys? I, I, I want to end the video, but honestly, that's all it is. We're not even, I don't think we've done a half hour and we have a full Ubuntu server running two open source Next.js apps, one of the best frameworks that's out there for React. Now, you don't feel that Next.js is only applicable to, you know, Netlify. And you could also run it on AWS. All you need is the Ubuntu server and just install the right packages and make sure you have the right config files. If you guys like React, front-end development, CSS animations, Next.js, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.